welcome to at home today. I am just looking at some of the beautiful Christmas cards that you've been sharing with me, and I appreciate it so much. I like the ones with the little houses, you know, because this really is at home. And we appreciate the greetings. Isn't it nice to get greetings from your friends? People that you haven't heard from for maybe all year long will stop and take time to address a card to you, and that is really meaningful. It is to me. I want to thank all of you that showed up at Woolies on Saturday. Didn't we have a good time? Hope you did. It was nice meeting so many of you folks, and we thank the Woolly Company, for, uh, Balcony Cookware, for allowing us to be there. And uh, that was just real special. Maybe we'll get to do some more of that in the future. Today, we're really going to get things started with appetizers and finger foods. Like if you want to have a, a party, but not a full-fledged party like with a, a dinner or some great huge cost factor to you, you can do some finger foods and some small parties where people just kind of mingle and uh, you serve your beverages and their conversation times more than sit down and eat times and that's what we're going to show today is some ideas for some appetizers and a wonderful dip for fruits called a harvest dip that is so easy the kids can make it. Before we begin though I want to tell you too that these wonderful fruit baskets are available at the Jordan Banana Company. They have any kind of a basket you could imagine just call up, ask for Pat or Doug or someone there that will be glad to help you. And um, they have any size, any shape, anything you want in it, they'll be glad to help you. They're, this is a season when this is the perfect gift for somebody that has everything. It's a wonderful gift. Well, get your papers and pencils ready because we're going to get started. It's just a few days before Christmas and we've got a lot of work to do. We'll be back right after this message. Today's at home hint. Antipasto can be eaten as an appetizer or as a main course. For a main course, serve with plenty of fresh, crusty bread and the beverage of your choice. If you have an at home hint, a favorite recipe, or just a friendly greeting you'd like to share, we'd like to hear from you. Post it in the comments of this video or visit our Facebook page. Well, to get started, we're going to talk about an antipasto tray. And this is one of the easiest things in the world to make if you're going to have this kind of a party or a get together. Let me show you this dish here. I trust you can see this is very simple and very basic. All you do is take, we'll start here with the broccoli, cherry tomatoes, one type of a light cheese, your green olives. This is marinated artichokes, green pepper, chunks of ham, black olives, red pepper, cauliflower, pepperoncinis, rolled salami, another Swiss cheese, and you're back to the broccoli. Now that is all sitting on a tray that has a bed of lettuce to it because when your, your friends and family, the guests begin to eat these things off, then they can take on their plate some of the lettuce base that it's on. There's a dressing on the lettuce base and what it makes a very nice tray. There's a variety of things here. Um, what I would put in this, these little peppers, I have a red pepper and a green pepper, I'm going to make a dip that you can put out with this so that folks can dip these things in. It's very simple. Basically, you're going to take a half a cup of mayonnaise, put it in a bowl, and you say, oh, Arlene, that's a lot of work. Really, it isn't. I did that today. Of course, I have a little help here. Uh, you know, chunking the cheese and things, but it didn't take that long. It's just the assembly. What you keep in mind when you're assembling is the color. Obviously, you wouldn't put all the greens on one side and all the whites on one side. You want to break them up. And that really is uh, very simple to make. This is eight ounces of sour cream. Okay. You have your sour cream and your mayonnaise. Then you take the dry, good seasons Italian dressing mix and you just pour it in there. That's all there is in this. I mean, there's not anything else except those three ingredients. And if you have the time, it's good to let this uh, sit in the refrigerator for about an hour. But if you don't, don't worry about it. If you're running late and you're rushing and you say, oh, I forgot to make the dip, no problem. Just be sure you take something to fill the pepper up with. And I, I like it because then you know, that pepper, someone could even eat that later if they, 
if uh, they so desired. But you fill up both of these, and it makes enough for a dip that will accommodate this whole antipasta tray. Uh, you would want to have something beside this. And when we show at the end of the program, I'll show you that you need some little fancy toothpicks or something like that so the people can get it off the tray. Because you don't want to have um, everything at one place so that everybody kind of congregates in one area. You want to spread your things out. In a party like this, the conversation is really what you're looking for because you need to, to group foods in different areas of your room. Take some chairs out. If you have 10 guests, have seating only for six people. That means there's four people that don't have a chair, but then see, they'll mingle. So some will be standing over there. Everybody isn't in one conversation then. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. So there we are. This is our, uh, let's see, let's put a few, let's put a little bit of this um, parsley to get my reach over here, just to decorate the top of it. Nice clean parsley. Isn't that nice? And that's really, you say, oh, that looks so hard. It isn't hard. And you can, you can make this to any kind of a, com, a combination of the things that you put on. It can be anything you want. You can put pepperoni on there. You can put prosciutto. You can put uh, stuffed eggs, anything you want. This is our antipasta tray. I think it turned out real nice, don't you? OK, moving right along. The second thing I want to show you, and this is so simple, it's almost, I feel funny telling you, but it really is easy. You go to the store and you ask for roast beef in the deli section. And they will give you slices like this. Tell them to cut it not exceptionally thin, but not real thick either. And what you want to do is take a sharp knife, not a serrated edge knife, because it will tear the meat and just cut it in half if it's a wide piece of roast beef like this. So you have pieces about that width, all right? Now you're gonna take some cream cheese, just a little chunk, don't have to go by size, just take a little chunk like that and you put it on one end of it, okay? Then you're gonna take, this is strange because uh, Linda Wilson says her husband loves roast beef and horseradish. Well, Roger's in for a treat because she's going to make these for him. And all you do is you wrap that cream cheese, um, you wrap the roast beef around the cream cheese. Simple as that. That is one of the tastiest appetizers that you would ever want to find. And as you can see, I have a whole tray full here that is just, it only took maybe 15 minutes, maybe not even that long. And the taste, the flavor of this is real, really good. Um, you will, you'll think that it's going to be, uh, what I have found when making hors d'oeuvres and special fancy things is, if it's time consuming, people think, well, it must be good. That's not necessarily so. If it's time consuming, there has to be a quicker way. That's my theory, my philosophy. And I'm usually trying to figure out, well, how can I make that quicker and easier? And um, this is one, and every time I make this, people say, oh, what's in there? That's so good. What is that? And all it is is just deli. Of course, I would cut, cut any of the fat or any of the gristle off, because you don't want to serve that to your guests. Again, you take a little chunk, a little bit of the horseradish. Now, sometimes it's good because I happen to have an allergy to horseradish, and I cannot eat it. So I'm always happy when people will tell you what's in a certain dip or a spread because there are people that have allergies that they can't have any of it. And it's nice to tell you if there's a, an unusual ingredient that you might think somebody would have a reaction to. It's nice to let people know that. So there are our um, roast beef, cream cheese, and horseradish. Now that looks pretty bland like that, so let's decorate it up with some, we'll call them uh, cherry, tree ornaments because it's Christmas, ha ha ha. They aren't really, but they, they look like they could be. And this is just curly endive that we're gonna put around the edge. Now look how easy that is and how different it looks just by putting a little bit of green. And it's not hard. My goodness, it's not hard, trust me. And you just buy a little bunch of curly endive, you can use this, it's good to eat. It's wonderful in a salad. And um, you just put it around the edge Thank you, Frank, appreciate that time cue. Because there's so much to get done today. I mean, I feel like I'm in a hurry, I'm on a race. 
because there's so many good ideas, it's hard just to pick a few to share with you, okay? So there we are, our roast beef, horseradish, and cream cheese appetizers, okay? Do you love watching At Home with Arlene Williams? Then be sure to check out our new YouTube channel. It's filled with classic episodes from over 20 years of At Home, and more videos are added each day. And don't forget to click the subscribe button so you'll never miss another episode of At Home. Well, now this next one is real unusual, and I think you're gonna, you're gonna enjoy it. Let me do a little clean up here. Okay, uh, I'm always looking for something unusual, and usually when I do a buffet or a, an hors d'oeuvre party, I try to find something that is the most unusual. And I think that probably this takes the cake. Let me get my glasses here so I can read my recipe. You're gonna start out with two packages of softened cream cheese, okay? There's two packs, softened cream cheese. The low or the light, the low fat or the light cream cheese could be fine. You could use that. Then we're gonna put in a half a cup of sour cream. Okay, now I'm not gonna measure this because this has, this would be about half of this because this is 16 ounces. So we'll say it's about a half a cup. Sorry, I need about a little less than that. My math is not real good today because I got so many things on my mind. I better put a little bit more of that back, okay. Anyways, remember it's a half a cup. It will be included in your recipe, <laughs> all right. And then we need three tablespoons of mayonnaise, okay. Is this three tablespoons, Linda? That looks like a little bit more. We're not gonna use quite all of that, all right. Then we're going to just mix it up, blend it together. Now this is gonna be a basis for three different kinds of a cheese spreads. Uh, you want to make sure that this is softened because if it isn't, you're going to have a really rough time blending it, okay? So we're going to make three different spreads out of this base. And that's what I'm looking for, things that are, that are especially nice but aren't so time consuming, okay? I probably will let that go just a little bit longer, but for the sake of time, it will be all right. Now, in one bowl, we're gonna take about a cup of this, okay? That's about a cup. And in that, we're gonna put some garlic salt. Let's see, my garlic salt. And this says one and a half teaspoons of garlic salt. Now that's a lot, but that's what the flavor of this is gonna be. Okay. Looks like we got a little problem with the garlic salt here. There we go. Sometimes this stuff will definitely dry out. Okay, so one and a half teaspoons sounds like a lot. But this is one of those things when you eat it, you know you're eating garlic. So save that till it's the last thing until you're ready to go home. That's probably when you'd want to serve this or taste it, okay? Then we're gonna have, besides that, we're gonna put um, some Tabasco sauce just a few drops of Tabasco. I better go with the smaller one. And that's, because you know what that's like, that's gonna be rough. Okay, and we're gonna mix this up because this is gonna be known as our garlic spread. Now you can put some other, um, if you have some fine herbs, you could put, fine herbs, you could put those in there. You could uh, put some basil in there if you wanted to. Anything that complements garlic would be fine in this spread, okay? and. After you've mixed it, mix it around real good. It's gonna have a tang because you've got some of that Tabasco in there too. The Tabasco and the garlic together is gonna be an interesting, okay? Now here's what we did, and I think this is nice. We took some just plain little, these are terracotta clay pots. And what we did, we lined it with foil. Now you want to be sure to line it with foil. That's necessary because you don't wanna put the food directly into the terracotta pot. So we're gonna put, this dressing into the pot, okay? We'll clean it up so there's none, no chance. They have been washed and they're very clean, but we just don't want the food to get on that terracotta surface because it probably wouldn't be real healthy. 
but I'm sure that if you have adults at this party, they're, and you just warn them, I'm sure that they're um, going to be careful about that. Okay, so there's the first one that we have. This is our garlic dip. Okay, I'll put that there for a minute. The next one we're going to do will be our cheese dip. Okay, again we go back to our original source. Take another cup. Okay, I think we got it there. Make sure I have enough left for the last one. Okay, and this one has, this is cheese. And we're going to put a third of a cup of cheese. This is Parmesan cheese. Okay, so we're going to put the Parmesan cheese in there. All right, and we're going to put a little bit of salt. That's, okay, a little bit of onion salt. Okay, a little less than a, about three fourths of a teaspoon of onion salt. You could omit the other salt if you wanted to and just go with all onion salt. I think that sometimes it's a little bit strong. A little bit of Worcestershire sauce, about a teaspoon of that. Worcestershire sauce, okay. Then what we're gonna do is really mix this up good, okay. A lot of Parmesan cheese. You're gonna have a real strong Parmesan cheese flavor in this, okay. Uh, just mix it up until it is incorporated very well. Should have had a little bigger bowl for this, it looks like. Did you ever do that, get started with something? I, one time I was making something, I had three different size bowls until I got the right one because you keep adding things, you think, well, this will do it. Then you add something more and you think, I better get a bigger bowl. You know, I'm one of those cooks that likes to dirty everything in the kitchen anyway. It doesn't matter what's in the cupboard, it gets dirty when I'm cooking. And um, the cleanup is horrendous at my house <laughs> and here at home too. Okay, so now we have it all mixed up pretty well. We could probably do it a little better if I had some more time, but just so you get the idea, we're mixing it up, mixing it up. You have to incorporate all the flavors. You don't want somebody to get a big taste of Worcestershire sauce because it all ran to one area. So that's our Parmesan. Okay, and again, we're going to put it in our terracotta pot, being sure that it goes down into the lining, okay? because we don't want that to go on the clay itself. Okay. You say, now what are you going to do with that, Arlene? Well, I'm going to show you in just a minute. Let me make you one more because these are so fun. There's that one. We have the last one to make, and I'm just going to make it in this pan. This one's going to have almonds in it. We're going to take one-fourth of a cup of softened butter, which is a half of a stick of butter, you really have to work with this soft. I mean, you couldn't, couldn't fudge at all with it, okay? So, your softened butter's there. Then we're going to add about a fourth of a cup of sugar, which I don't seem to have here. Let me get some sugar. I, I think it's pretty unusual that they would, um, they would use sugar in this, but I think it's because of the almonds. And the, um, there's raisins in this, which is a little different. It's kind of a fruity flavor. And we need to, I'd probably cut that down and not use as much as, they, as this recipe is calling for. I, it says a fourth of a cup. I'd probably use about an eighth of a cup. Let's go a little less than that because I think it's better if it's not as sweet. Then we're gonna put some raisins. And that's about, um, about a good fourth of a cup, maybe a few more. Okay, and our slivered almonds. You can toast these or just put them out of the package. That'll give it a really nutty flavor. Okay, I need a little bit stiffer something here to work with than that. Now, you just keep oh, a little piece of paper in there if we didn't know. Okay, anyway, we're gonna just mix this all together. Isn't it fun to do these ty types of things at this time of the year, particularly? But, you know, when you learn how to do them, you find that it's not so hard. You would do some things like this if you're going to have a group in for a Saturday evening or someone's coming over to play Scrabble or whatever. This isn't that hard, these types of things, because you're starting with a basic recipe. Okay, so there is our last one, and it is called our almond spread. And we've just mixed it up and we're putting it in the clay pot. Whoops. 
I might add too while we're talking about it. You really need this close to Christmas. We're about two weeks away, something like that. We really need to be getting the, all of our linens out and making sure that they're clean and prepared and ready. If there's any spots that you need to deal with, get the spot removers, get whatever it is that's, um, that you're gonna be using for your dinners and your parties, get them out and look them over so you don't have to do all that to last minute because the last minute stuff will drive you crazy. Now let me show you what we're gonna do with that, those three little spreads that we made. You're gonna take a tray a nice square tray, okay? And you're gonna put your pots. Let's see, that was the almond one. Let me show you what we're gonna put. We're gonna put a little sign here. This is cross-stitched, and Linda Wilson did that for us. This is the garlic spread here. And this one is our cheese spread. Aren't they cute? Then, so it looks like they're in our garden, you take these tiny little oyster crackers and you just put them all around it. And then people can dip the oyster crackers into the dip. Okay, probably gonna need about a bag and a half. I don't think that's quite gonna be enough to cover everything. Maybe it is. Maybe add just a few more. But we're gonna send you, if you send for the recipes, we are going to give you the instructions on how to do the cross stitch too because I think you're gonna like that a lot. Okay, so there it is. That's our three spreads out of one basic recipe. And there they are, clay pots, okay? I have one more I want to show you really quickly because it's a wonderful fruit dip. Let me just move this out of the way. It's so easy, the kids, like I said, the kids can make it. I have that here. It's going to take some apples that you've already sliced and you have them, not peeled, but you have them cored, and we have them covered with lemon juice. And all it is is another package of the cream cheese, and you're going to add three-fourths of a cup of brown sugar. Now, when this, we get done making this, you're gonna, everybody's going to say to you, this looks like peanut butter. And it really does, but it's called Harvest Dip, and it's the most wonderful tasting, easy, easy. All you do, you add this to this, three-fourths cup of brown sugar. Okay, we get rid of the tray. You add a little bit of vanilla. We get the vanilla open. Doesn't seem like we can. You know, this always happens to me. I, I get going, you know, and think everything's open. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. Anyway, to save time, you're gonna put a teaspoon of vanilla into this. Mix this very, very well, okay? When you're done mixing this, you'll be amazed at how creamy this sauce or this dip will be. And you're gonna put it out when you have um, strawberries, or you could use it with apples or oranges, any kind of fruit. It's a, a pleasant tasting, very pleasant tasting dip. And it gets creamier, it seems, the longer you leave it out. And the, the combination, whoops, of the brown sugar and the cream cheese together is wonderful, very refreshing, very tasty. You can see, now I've used dark brown sugar. If you want to use the lighter brown, that's fine. But you really need to beat this so it's really, really smooth. Okay, I think we're getting there. A little taste of vanilla would be an addition, but you understand, since we couldn't get it open, sometimes you just have to get a hold of it. There we go. And what I would do with this, is I would put it on a nice big tray. I'd put my little bowl in the center. I would add my cream cheese and brown sugar that has been beat very, very well. Probably a little bit longer than what I'm doing, maybe even with the mixer, okay? No, we're, we don't have too many minutes left. Put it in there, okay? Looks like peanut butter, doesn't it? It's not, it's called Harvest Dip. And the, it's so refreshing and the taste with apples is wonderful. And what we've used here, look how nice this color is. We've used the red, the green, and the golden delicious. These are Granny Smiths. You could arrange them or you could just stack them all around the dip. But what a wonderful, refreshing change after you've been eating a lot of the other foods that we've been talking about, just to have a piece of fruit and to have a little dip with that. 
It's very refreshing, very, very refreshing. And uh, I think that I've given you some ideas today. I hope I have. I trust that this has helped you uh, with your menus for the holiday season. And don't be afraid to try. It's my favorite word, just try it. I didn't know if I could ever do this until I tried. And I tried and found out I could. I was as surprised as anybody. <laughs> but anyway, we'll be back in just a minute to show you everything we've prepared today. Just go to ctvn.org slash at home to get all the recipes from today's show for free. That's right, no subscriptions. They're available online at no cost and more are being added each day. So join us at ctvn.org slash at home to get today's recipes now. I hope you've learned a few things today. I think I have, like to get my vanilla bottle open before I get on the air, but you understand. Anyway, I just want to show you, when you have a buffet, take all the chairs away from the table. You don't need people bumping into them as they're going around. And everybody has access the whole way around the table. Be sure you have little forks of some kind or little toothpicks next to finger food so that people aren't using their fingers. They're using them to get them onto their plate. And I think these are some cute little paper plates. I think that's all right to use whenever you're uh, in the holiday season and you have so much to do that you just don't want to be doing a lot of dishes. This is a basic, simple thing that you can put together very simply and very quickly. And next week we'll be celebrating Christmas together. So be sure to join us next time because it just wouldn't be the same without you right here at home. Bye-bye. Don't forget to click the subscribe button so you'll never miss another episode of At Home. Thank you for watching. Fresh produce provided by Jordan Banana, wholesalers of fresh fruit and vegetables in Dravosburg, PA. Cookware provided by Woolies. Your favorite gourmet deserves the best for less at Woolly Balcony Cookware. Groceries provided by Foodland, where the answer is always yes. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.